Okay, so continuing on with class seven, this is example 14.2 out of Shigley. Now, I this is where I'm gonna vary uh, what I my instructions to you from what Shigley has in it, um, because I don't like um, the method by which they've uh, have done something here. Okay, so uh, I want to keep it more consistent with what we learned in chapter six. So this we're gonna take the fatigue um, uh, stuff that we learned and modify the material, right? So that we, uh, uh, instead of just using it based on the yield strength, which is what uh, example 14.1 did, we're gonna find the um, infinite life uh, uh, endurance strength. So we wanna find the endurance strength uh, right there. And I think that they might, uh, do they, did, did they also, well, we'll see in here in a second. Okay, so, um, I am going just just be aware that I'm going to ask you to do something slightly different uh, from Shigley, but I think it will make sense when you uh, see what I'm asking you to do. Okay, so now um, we, we, we should have looked up uh, for the AISI um, 1020 steel. We would have found that the ultimate strength was 55 KSI, so we needed that uh, from the, the previous one right there. So we're looking to try to do this based on fatigue. Um, so what we start off with, we know that the SE prime that we get is going to be 0.5 times the ultimate strength. So uh, obviously we get 27, whoop, equals 27.5 KSI. Easy enough. Now some of the difficulties come, we have to get that endurance strength, which we remember we were KA, KB, KC, KD, KE, KF, which is not the stress concentration, and then SE prime. So that's our mission. If you recall, this is the surface condition factor. Surface condition factor, uh, KA, is based on the way the, um, uh, the, the, let's see, oh, by the way, Let's see if they fixed in their thing in the 14.2. Let's see if they fixed um, the surface condition, the Marin factors, right? It looks like they did. Okay, so we're going to uh, see here. So in my example, what I've written down on my page is gonna be slightly different because this is this, this version of the book, the 11th edition of the book is different from the 10th edition. They've changed these Marin factors, but we need to you look up KA from chapter six. So coming back from this, uh, these endurance uh, modifying factors. Um, let's look them up. Here's KC, here is KA. Oh, can move this over this way, okay. Okay, so here was KA. We need to have these um, A and B right in there, that A and that B. And now they take that from this table right here. Let's see. Okay, so from a previous edition, and I have one that's pretty beat up, uh, that's right there. Um, we can see that they changed the table, right? So here's here's the table there, here, and, and then here's the previous one right there. So you can see um, these values that they put in here, right? So for um, they're slightly different. The um, constant and the exponent um, have been changed on here. So we want to uh, make sure that we account for that when you're um, doing your work and we have to uh, closely uh, watch in there. So anyway, um, as part of this, uh, we assume um, that the condition factor, let's see, where did they decide? They decided that the, um, uh, it was gonna be machined, which kind of makes sense. I mean, it, it really, we, we really should be told how, the, um, how these were cut. So if they are machined, we use uh, an A equal to two and a B equal to negative 0.217, right? So let's put this in here. Um, here's so the surface condition. 
the right surface is Ka is going to be equal to A, SUT raised to the B, right? So uh, where A is, as I mentioned, 2.0, two and B was is going to be a negative 0 0.217. So that's going to take this 50, whoop, 2, and uh, 55 raised to the negative 0.217. And I don't think they use enough sig figs in Shigley uh, for these. They should be better examples to you. 55 and a 0.217, make it negative, and I raise it, and then two times. So I have 0 0.8382. All right, so the next one is the size factor, right? So size is going to be KB. And one thing that you should remember about the this right here is that for the size factor. Um, okay, so um, it's not axial, so we need bending, but they may sit, base it on the diameter, right? Um, and this thing is not uh, round. It's these gear teeth, it's a gear teeth. And it also is not rotating. So when we do that, we come over this table here and we want to get um, an equivalent diameter. So we want to use this guy right here um, to find this equivalent diameter to be able to find what the uh, uh, size factor is going to be. So um, what we do for here, okay, so first what we're going to need to know is, let me, let me go back to that we have to use the equation that's going to be, um, uh, what did I just say right here? Let me see. 0 0.808 times the square root of h over b. And by way, they mean h over b is, here is the height of the thing, right? It's being bent about this axis, and here's the base. Okay, so for us, um, what we're going to say is that the height of this thing is, let me see, uh, I'm going to say it's the right way. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're going to take uh, the two thickness. Let me pause. Let me pause, double check, and see what, um, uh, what I have written down looks a little iffy. So um, what we're essentially saying when we're bending right here is that this is actually equal to the two thickness right there. And then this right here is going to be equal to the tooth um, uh, uh, face width. Okay. Now they do this differently than I do. I say we might as we were making an approximation anyway. So we already know, they already gave us that the two thickness is approximately equal to the lowercase p c. So this is the circular pitch divided by two right here. The circular pitch, of course, is pi divided by the diametral pitch. So it's divided by two. Um, so we get pi over eight divided by two, and we're left with a 0.1963, right, I inches. We're also got the face width is 1.5 inches, okay? So, uh, and I, I noticed something that looks like a mistake in on my part right here, so I wanna uh, uh, fix it. So I have to actually use the, the correct numbers right here. So, um, going back up to here, 0 0.808 square root of 0 0.1963 times 1 1.5. Let's see. What kind of numbers that we end up getting? It'll be interesting. 1.5.1963 multiply, take the square root and multiply 0 0.808. And I end up with a uh, 0 
eight four. Okay, so in my um, in my notes, I was right, but I, I left uh, right uh, numerically. Okay, so that's going to be the diameter uh, that we use here. So coming back over into this section um, of the book here, in our um, endurance strength and the modifying factors, uh, we want to take this shape, right? So the shape factor here is um, if we have 0.4384, um, that's going to definitely be uh, this equation right here, uh, where we have 0.879 times the diameter raised to the right here. So we come through and we say that KB is going to be um, 0 0.879 nine times the diameter raised to the 0 0.107 0 0.4384 raised to the negative 0 0.107 and according to this we get a 0 0.9601 which is not you know that's that's a small that, that that's close to one now that compare that to what the book got. They went through a different thing, where they're they're taking like a, a different method approach to get this thickness. They're, it's based on the shape of the tooth a little bit. With and they're, they're yeah, you re, read it and check it out right there. I think it makes a lot more sense just to use uh, one half of the pitch circle diameter. I mean the the circular pitch, um, but they get a point nine four eight. Whereas we get a 0.96. All right. Um, the next one that we'll uh, have here is KC, reviewing this. And this is just really a good review of um, chapter uh, six for us. Uh, we got KC is one, it's bending, right? That's the only thing we're really curious about, is, is bending. So that's fine. Um, so, so this was a, a load type, right? Uh, um, now the rest of them, remember that this was uh, temperature, uh, I believe this was reliability, and this was miscellaneous. Here is where a, a big departure is gonna be um, from what was in the book. Let's see if the, the book has changed. Um, no, they haven't. They did something that I don't like. They decided they were going to replace this miscellaneous factor with a new factor that's going to account for um, bending uh, or the type of uh, uh, the, the fluctuating, the mid-range and the alternating. Remember, okay, because this is an on-off type of um, bending, right? So uh, it's not a fluctuating. It's not going compression, tension, compression, tension. It's really just going to be like, well, on one side is tension, the other side is compression, but it only goes on and then off as the tooth gets loaded, right? Each time the tooth gets loaded onto the thing, it gets stressed, but then it's let go, right? So that's the type of loading, and it's different from what the endurance strength is based on. It, you know, we're doing an apples to apples thing here. Um, so this endurance strength is normally based on fluctuating, whereas ours is just goes on and off. So you make, you know, it, it, it's a good read what they do as part of this right here. Um, they start to take, uh, and they take Goodman, and they modify this Goodman around, and then um, they find this factor right here, 1.33, and they decide that that's gonna be this new KF. I think I would prefer to um, keep it as the, um, as we would have it generally in um, uh, 370, right? Not to uh, uh, use this new factor. So anyway, um, continuing on with these other factors, we're gonna assume all of them are equal to one. Let's see. Okay, and so this is a departure from the book right here. Um, so if we do that, we get an endurance strength of 0.8382 times 0.9601 times one, 
one, one, one. I think I got enough of them. And then 27.5, right? And I need to calculate this because it's ever so slightly different uh, from my previous uh, numbers because I'm using the 11th edition for the uh, surface condition right here. So, um, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, okay, so uh, that's a point nine six zero one times that times our 27.5 and we get 22.13 so we have 22.13 KSI is going to be uh, this is going to end up being the allowable stress but we have to do a little bit of a modifying uh, thing coming on here um, there's also something that we're going to need to uh, do as part of this and that is uh, to um, watch out for the stress concentration. We also need to have a stress concentration uh, uh, factor uh, that's going to be thrown into our stress. Okay, so um, so the stress concentration, and this is not this is something that's not a rule of thumb. So what we're going to have in terms of our shape of our tooth right here, right, as we have a force being applied to there, we're going to have a stress concentration there at the root. We're going to need to know what the radius of this root is right there, because there is a little bit of a, of a radius right here. There's a fillet radius in there, and we want to know what the stress concentration is going to be. But remember, it needs to be fatigue stress concentration, right? So we're really looking for this capital KF uh, that we want to use nothing to do with this KF. That little KF is just a miss. I mean, they, this is lowercase k. We want big KF, right? So we're in the hunt for what is the big KF. So first off, we need a big KT. And then, uh, you know, because we're going to use for this, we're going to use the 1 plus notch sensitivity KT minus 1, right? So this is the equation that we're going to use. We're going to need to use, we're actually going to need to know this fillet radius for for not only for this, but also for this. So let's go after them. Now there's a, um, a rule of thumb. Uh, for gears, uh, where the radius, the fillet radius, and this is only in this example, it's not where, I can't find it anywhere on the book, is the fillet radius is 0.3 divided by the diametral pitch. Yeah, I know. So uh, 0.3 divided by 8, and we get a 0 0.0375 inch right there. Now we're also going to need to look up the stress concentration, right? So the stress concentration um, for this, we, well, we don't really quite have one, but what we can use is um, it, the, the one that looks like this right here, right? All right, so we have a bar, and it's oh, and, and it's a moment being placed onto the end of it because it's bending, and we do have a fillet radius, but we have a diameter. Well, not diameter. We have a D. It doesn't stand for diameter. It's just the thickness for whatever reason. All right, so we want to look that up in our stress concentration, and that's going to be right here, right. So that's the type of bending uh, or stress concentration that we have. But this big D, it's really, really large. So what we decide to use is we're just going to use the best information available. We're going to use a ratio of D to D of 3. And then we're going to uh, use our R over D ratio right here to find a KT from that. Okay, so. Um, and that, that uh, once again, uh, for here is this is going to be the tooth thickness right here, and here is the radius, right? So um, that uh, uh, radius to D ratio right here is really going to be our radius to thickness, which is going to be our 0 0.0375 divided by the thickness that we um, calculated up above, right? Or 
0.1963 and so that's going to be a 0 0.1910 so we're also going to use a D over D I think it's D over D big D over little D we're going to assume why three? We don't have any better information is basically the, the answer there. Um, so we look that up. We come up in here and we take our 0.19, so that's close to 2, 0.2 right here. And looking at here, um, my estimate is that the um, we get a 1.5, right? So you see this is 1.4. That's 1.8, so this must be 1.6, this must be 1.5 is halfway in between there. We have that just underneath 0.2 and right around, and we're using the number 3 right there. So our estimate for our KT is 1.5. Now we need a Q. And um, we're already doing lots of estimates, so using that crazy equation, that's in chapter six for our notch sensitivity right here, which is which knocks down our um, stress concentration. Uh, using one that's like re you know using that equation is like an overkill uh, type of thing. We, we don't need to uh, go into that much uh, uh, you know, precision onto the thing because we were already making some. Uh, assumptions, but we, we still want to use you know as, as good numbers. Pick carefully, pick numbers off, not just willy nilly guess stuff. Um, all right, so you remember notch sensitivity from right here uh, for bending. Uh, we're going to use um, 55 ksi, so we're, we're uh, for ultimate strength, which is like close to the 60. In our notch radius, uh, we said was an estimate of 0 0.0375. So somewhere like over in here, there's 0 0.04. So like we're somewhere in here and we're gonna be a little bit lower than our 55 right here. So I said my notch sensitivity um, was 0.62. Now I might've used an equation for that, um, but you can kind of see that that's maybe a kind of a reasonable uh, approach right there, 0 0.62, why not? You know, this remember that this is point, like 0.7 would be halfway here, so Somewhere there, it's in a lower, it's it's in this lower area, 0.62. So if we do that, we go back to this uh, KF right here, and we would get a KF is equal to one plus 0.62 times our 1.5 minus one, and so we have a KF of um, 1.310. Okay. Uh, lastly, I'm going to go ahead and, okay, so I kind of jumped on this. I'm going to jump, I'm going to adjust this without putting the factor in. Is that what I decided to do? I put in here, because I want to get the, um, lastly, I want to get the, um, yes, the uh, uh, account for uh, the fact that uh, we have an on-off uh, type of um, loading, right? So the loading, uh, the loading that we have is like this right here, right? Where here is the maximum, and that's the stress that gets placed onto here, right? So um, what we're really gonna, we really want to have is a sigma m, or is there, and sigma a is here. So they're going to be equal to each other in this type of loading, the on-off loading. The load is on off, right? Uh, so to account for that, we use um, this idea and Goodman right here. But uh, we should remember that uh, this is really going to be one half of the stress, and this is one half of the stress, right? And they're going to be equal to each other because this is the total stress that's being placed on the thing, but it's on off type of style. So uh, we use Goodman. And um, let me continue on another sheet of paper. And I didn't make to make this video this long, but um, 
I'll try to make the glass a little shorter and then you could come to the video and look over it if you want a refresher as to why things are done as you're going through this right here. Um, so Goodman, you'll recall, is, um, I'll write this safety factor over here. Safety factor of Goodman is one over and uh, it's gonna be sigma A over SE plus sigma M over SUT. So if we want to find um, a, uh, our uh, allowable stress, um, that's going to uh, come up and be, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace in here, right? The sigma uh, uh, right in here is gonna be, we're gonna replace sigma over two, right? But because both the sigma A and the sigma M are sigma over two. Um, also, while we're at it, I think we're going to also, uh, well, eventually we'll uh, multiply our um, uh, stress concentration uh, uh, by, by uh, into here. So just to, we're, we're gonna combine them all together, just so you know. And this is, this is sort of like just a small deviation of what's done in the book, but. All right, so, um, Hmm, I rearranged this thing right here and with my sigma over two um, placed into here, I think I did a little bit of uh, algebra here over to the side, but I think we are okay. I have sigma over SE plus sigma over SUT and that's gonna be equal to one right there. So that's what I did is I just replaced uh, that and that with this right here I brought the two out over to the side so in the safety factor and I collected them there. So now I want to, um, I did a little bit more algebra here on my own. I took the common denominator. So I have sigma SUT plus sigma SE divided by SE over SUT. And I brought over um, that two over N over to the side. So I brought sigma to the outside and said uh, two S E S U T. All right, multiply that over to the side over here. And then I also have my S U T plus my S E, right? And um, I also have my safety factor uh, placed in here. Now, this is gonna be the allowable stress based on this information right here, right? So, so I have my safety factor in here, um, but I also have uh, these, other, these other values. Um, while I'm at it, uh, the stress that would actually exist is actually gonna be KF right there, right? So I wanna divide this allowable stress by my KF as well by my stress concentration. I think this is the right spot to, um, to put this in. So uh, I'm gonna write, that's the allowable, allow. Sometimes it says all, it looks confusing. So the allowable stress, uh, based on this, I have two. My SE was 22.13. My SUT was 55. My safety factor was three. My, so I got my 22.13. Oh, I need to add that in there. And, oh, that should have been 55 right there. I guess it didn't matter, but I put it in there anyway. 55, 22.13. And then my stress concentration was 1.310. So if I do all of those, uh, here's my 22.13, I have it already in there. Multiply it by 55, multiply it by two. I'm gonna use it again, add there, and divide, divide, and then my uh, 1.31 divide, I get, 
an allowable of 8.031 KSI, right? So um, now we can do the same stuff that we did in the previous example, but now we have a new allowable stress that has accounted for endurance, safety factor, and stress concentration, right? It also accounts for the fact of the type of the loading. I know, it's a very long example. Um, but let's go ahead and put it back into the stuff that we had. Almost everything is the same from the previous problem. You recall that we had um, uh, stress is equal to KV um, WT pitch divided by uh, FY right here. So what we're saying is that it's going to be 8,031. It's going to be equal to our KV, which was um, 1.524. Our uh, WT is what we're going to get calculator here. Our pitch is still 8. And our F is still 1.5. And our Lewis form factor is still going to be 0.296. So if we want to get our WT uh, from that, and of course my numbers have slightly changed, I'm going to see I'll multiply that by 1.5, boom. Multiply it by 296, boom. I'll divide it by 8 and divide it by 1.524, boom. And oh, I forgot to multiply it by 1,000. Yeah, because that was. Um, so I get 292.5 pounds, and I want now I want the power, and so the power is going to be W T times V uh, divided by 33,000. So we get 292.5, and our W V was still going to be uh, 628.3. And it's still divided by 33,000. So our horsepower, according to this, 628.3 times 33. And I get it. It's going to now, we've reduced it to 5.569 horsepower, is going to be the rating if we want to have infinite life and with a safety factor of three, right? So this is a fatigue um, uh, calculation. This is the, the, the fatigue-based uh, um, strength uh, or, or horsepower limit uh, that we want to place on it. So I encourage you to uh, look through the original right here, and let's see what they got. Let's see what they got for the original and make a comparison. We already made a comparison to the Boston gear, which said it was like 10.3 horsepower or something like that right there. So we want to compare and figure out uh, how we did, and I can't quite find the chapter right here. Uh, example 14.2. Uh, yeah, you'll you'll be. Um, let's see. So they got 5.9 horsepower. Now, one thing also, by the way, uh, I should point out they. Um, uh, did this uh, when they 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 didn't use Goodman. They decided to use Gerber instead, um, which is a slightly th different thing, right? Right here was the 1.33. That this is the factor that they get using Gerber, and they apply it inside of um, that KF, right? So that but but then they in, excuse me. This is what they get for Goodman. This is what they get for Gerber, right? When they go and they make like this factor. Uh, that they want, right? So they say this miscellaneous factor is 1.66 based on Gerber. Um, it's 1.33 uh, ba uh, um, based on, so that their KF is 1.33 based on Goodman. And I just like to stick with Goodman, so. Um, but you'll see what the result is when everything is said and done. You say, well, what's the answer? Well, do you uh, remember that this is a fatigue type of thing and we you know, there's a great amount of uncertainty when it comes to fatigue, so.
Well, we probably will want to use a uh, safety factor that's of three right in there. So um, that is a 35 minute video, but we're going to do another example. Mm, exciting. Try to be more succinct in class.